Is that image? How we How's doing? it going? Yeah, very good. Very good. It was a, a very full on weekend. Yeah, how are you feeling after that? Yeah, I'm surprised we uh we're able to race and do that afterwards. It's uh it's definitely full on, but it was really good to see the team like absolutely dominate the weekend. There was a a lot of positives, a lot of highs, and a lot of like really um a really happy team as well. Um, which is you feel like a proud father in a way. Uh, I think you're on mute. Yeah, it was um, yeah, it was a great weekend all round. It was an incredible turnout from the from the team, and Matchin made an appearance, and here he is again. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, good, Matt. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Sweet. How's the body feeling after the weekend? Yeah, it feels like a body, eh? A little bit. <laughs> <empty>. <laughs> <laughs> You are human. You're immortal. <laughs> yeah, a little bit broke. Like up, upper body is just there, and then the legs are just doing their own thing at the moment. <laughs> what do you mean they're doing their own thing at the moment? Well, they just move whatever direction that <laughs> can in whatever plane of movement they can. <laughs> yeah, sort of like semi-functioning. <laughs> really good. So yeah. Can for weekend lots of uh lots of laughs yeah lots of progress yeah lots of lots of good stuff happening were you down on the sundays matt as well matt you weren't were you nah no nah, I, was, I was really busy on uh the sunday so yeah. I, yeah, I could only get down for the one day make sure you're sane as well yeah yeah i was only there for the saturday and then i had stuff on yesterday yeah yeah well, it's busy enough just doing the one day, and I was exactly the same because I was I was there with little one, and yeah, had the the other little one um, Sunday. So yeah, busy weekend of lots of travelling. I went from Shropshire to East Anglia to then what is it, Oxford, Buckinghamshire, then back up to Norfolk, then back to Shropshire. So it was a lot of a uh, lot of driving this weekend, and uh, it was incredibly hot as well. So um, hats off to all the guys that did race and actually do the beast because, yeah, I was I was pretty uh, exhausted by the end of Saturday, let alone the additional travelling I had. But I didn't even race. <laughs> so, yeah. Probably did a beast in your own right, though, running up, up and down, chasing and screaming at everyone. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But, um, yeah, it's good. And I think it was good for myself and Mitch as well to um, not get sucked into like the racing as well considering Spartan's not really our, our focus this year is it Mitch to be honest it's uh yeah it's more more UK OCR based it was nice to just relax well say relax it was just nice to support everyone else and like watch uh, the guys and ladies race because then you could like pick little things up for each individual and like there's then like teaching points towards it afterwards as well. So yeah, it was just nice to just stop. Yeah. Well, it's nice going into well, a race weekend, um, where we're supporting other people, but not necessarily like having the the pressure to actually go out and race and perform ourselves because that's it's incredibly difficult. I know we had a little bit of a chat about it maybe Saturday night. But it is a hell of a lot because we're doing our own race prep. And I know, Matt, we spoke about this last week as well. It's like, and it was hard, but it's like when you get to the venue, head down, do your own stuff, get yourself warmed up, get yourself to the start line. But just because there's so many people that you haven't seen in a while or want to connect with, you kind of get sucked down that rabbit hole. And it's like, oh, wait, I haven't done bag drop. I haven't got my kit ready. I haven't gone to the toilet. I haven't got warmed up. And it can quickly snowball. But then we can put that pressure on ourselves because – yeah, we want to kind of fulfill all of the our personal needs, but other people's needs, and yeah, want to go out there and perform at the same time. It's it's definitely challenging to to do that, then race, and then um, have a full on day in the sunshine, socialising as as well. And then for the guys that done multiple races this weekend as well, it's it's full on, really, really full on. Cool. So um, let's dive in. I want to talk about the race weekend and 
your experiences, Matt, in particular, yours. Um, and then I want to talk about, well, some upcoming events, and then we can go whatever direction we want with this conversation. I was going to chat a little bit about injury prevention, but maybe we can talk about like race nutrition a little bit more um, and evaluate what we actually saw in other races, um, what can be improved for their future races. Um, but yeah. What I'll kick start with then, guys, because I know a lot of people are going to listen to this on Facebook and also back on the podcast, is we've got like three retreats in the calendar. We've got one for August, which is here in the UK, um, and that's going to be like a, a hill running um, retreat. That is a very broad explanation of it. There's going to be like so much more um to it the details are actually over on the website so if you go to livingprimal.co.uk you'll find all the details there um there'll be more stuff added and equally there's another one that will be in a similar sort of location in january and then another big one out in majorca so if you're interested in like looking at what we're actually doing in person not just like at the spartan race weekends but actually doing like a fully immersive weekend day or even a week in the instance of, of Mallorca, like come along and do it. We recorded a podcast actually like pretty shoddily because it actually cut off towards the back end. But um, yeah, it explains a lot of the details. And I think a lot of people, when they are wanting to grow or wanting to break free from something or going through challenges in life or with training, we can remain stagnant quite easily and we find it hard to break free. And equally, the, the people that have come on these retreats previously have had to carve out time of their life in, in their life to, to go and do these things. And actually, I was on a retreat that I've just promoted on my social media as well. I had to like carve seven days out to go and do that, a day to travel up there, a day to travel back and actually five days of doing it. And then you have to do the work. And then once you've done the work and, and done that, it doesn't end. You've got to integrate everything that you've learned. So it is a big commitment, but it's worth it. So we just want to talk about that as well. There'll be other things. I'm looking at doing some day events, training, like come and train with me, Mitch, um, like in the local area and stuff like that. And we'll put out where we're going, whether it's track sessions, hill running sessions, whether we're going to go to an OCR venue as well. So if you guys are interested in that as well, like just, just let us know because we want to start meeting up more. We're coming out of this, well, we've came out of this post pandemic period and we've very much been sucked into it as like a team because a lot of the work we do is online and the reason we do the online work is because it's incredibly powerful like for those of you that have had like personal training or health coaching in person all you're going to talk about all you're going to do is the physical training whereas what we do is we can focus on everything because we've got so much reach um through through the the internet um we can we can really focus on what gives us the biggest return on investment for our time, effort, and energy. But now we've understood that actually we need that in-person interaction and it's one of the most important things, all right? So yeah, look out for that stuff. And if it if it screams out to you or you feel called cool to come and do that stuff, like just don't hesitate because it will it will just be a pivotal thing for you and you'll you'll grow exponentially from it. Cool. All right, let's dive back into the race weekend. Um so yeah, Spartan Beast on the Saturday and then also scheduled in was um, nuclear races on the Sunday, which I think only a couple of guys done that. I know there's a few more of us planned to do it, but yeah, we um, we decided not to. Um, and then also on Saturday and Sunday was 10K Super and um, a 5K Sprint as, as well. So Matt, let's go into your, your race. This is your first Spartan Beast. <laughs> There was absolutely no peer pressure to get you in on do this. <laughs> Sound quite resistant, shall we? I've, I've held off for a while, but uh, yeah, the team got behind me and pushed me along for it. So actually feeds quite nicely into um, what you were saying there about sort of like community in person, whatnot. And the biggest takeaway for me this weekend was like, getting immersed with with the people that we work with but also like yourselves um because yeah on like behind the screen we're, we're different people um and it was just so nice to to meet people individually and you know put a face to to what someone looks like because yeah you can only sort of see this much um so yeah seeing how people are like like big 
like absolute shit houses and whatnot, like Neef, Godfrey, and all that. Like, um, yeah, I saw Sam Hall. I got sandwiched between him and uh, Owen Griffith. And uh, yeah, I was like in the middle. <laughs> so just two masses of uh, man mountains next to me. So yeah, it was, it was good to, to meet people individually. Um, but yeah, it was incredible experience. It's, it's given me an insight as well. Um, I didn't really go into it with too many expectations apart from set myself a goal of like top 20 um, based on the ability to be able to train specifically um for for it under the conditions I was at moving around so so frequently so uh yeah boss that came like eighth age group in the end which not too bad for my first one I was pretty pleased um spear throw was the only thing that let me down so yeah um apparently it was like one of the longest spear throws ever it was like throwing it across a football pitch or something um yeah so definitely highlighted some some areas that I'm weak in um, but I use my strengths as well. I had a bit of a game plan going into it. So I run hard downhill. I made so much ground with that and, and, and use sort of my running capabilities. I knew that the upper body strength was always going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, but yeah, just had to push through it. So uh, yeah, just a phenomenal experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, going out there and just absolutely crushing it. I think we can speak about the, the challenges you actually face with your own training that as well, because I know a lot of the guys in the community know that, but not not many actually like in like the Facebook group or people that like listen to us and the content we put out. Like so just explain a little bit about like your lifestyle, Matt, and like actually what what you do. Um, because that adds a, a whole different challenge to being able to actually train consistently. And more importantly, specifically for OCR, although you're like an OCR coach and like coach a lot of the guys in in the team, what's the difference between like coaching it and doing it? And what are the like challenges in well applying this with the lifestyle you've got? Yeah, so I've been effectively I've been traveling for the last four and a half years, um, pretty much just around the world. So yeah, it's like when it comes to my training specifically, like I've always been leaning towards more like the um, trail races and things like that because most places that I visit, I can go for a run. So it becomes more problematic when you, you're trying to fit, finding a place to to potentially live for a little while, moving around so frequently. So there's air travel, there's early, night, um, early mornings, late nights, broken sleep time zone changes then it's trying to find places where which have got like good quality internet um good supermarkets or or stores nearby where you can get food then there's gyms and trying to get all that to marry up and match and then also trying to get races at the same time like it's never going to be perfect and i'm always sort of either a little bit out of alignment with one thing so i have to focus on something else so yeah it's, it's never going to be perfect but one of the biggest challenges that I've found recently, like when I booked the beast, um, I only booked it like two months ago just because I didn't exactly know where I was going to be at what point. So yeah, I ended up um, booking that and I was just like, right, I need to find somewhere that's got a gym so I can practice some grip training. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, like I found a gym, but then it was, it was kind of like, um, a fitness center slash hotel, but because it was Ramadan as well, like they only eat in the evenings um, during the day. So you couldn't be drinking water and things like that. Um, so that added an extra sort of challenge to it was sort of trying to follow along with that. But also it didn't have like a, um, a kitchen in my hotel. So I had a good training facility, but then no kitchen. So I was doing a lot of fasting. Um, and then I was just having like one meal in the evening, which wasn't really what I'd say properly effective for my training because I wanted to have extra energy on board for those harder training sessions. So that was just one example. Um, there's various other things, but yeah, it's just, you don't have a routine and, you know, consistency. So I might have one gym one week and then the next thing it's not very good the next, um, the week after. So it's just adapt and overcome to a certain point and, I didn't set any real expectations for, you know, beyond my capability because 
that would have led to sort of like disappointment. So it was just being very realistic with what I have available. For sure. However, it is, it is possible to still sort of remain fit and healthy on the move, but it requires that extra little, extra little bit of discipline as well that goes with it. Yeah, hundred percent. It really does. Um, and watching you literally travel the world over the past few years, yeah, you, you've remained consistent and you're still still in great shape. Um, and I think that's the important thing for a lot of people to realise is like it's the consistency across the board. It doesn't need to be like perfect. And this is where I feel like a lot of people like trip up. They're looking for the perfect plan, the perfect solution, everything to be aligned, and then they'll take action. But like you've just said with your lifestyle, that's it's like not even possible because you may have like the perfect like place to like cook and relax, but then you're miles from like a gym. So you can train specifically for that event or you're in a city. So you can't actually run because it's just fucking carnage on the streets or, or whatever. Um, but it's taking the shots as best you can in, in that moment over the long term. And you've had some great performances in like trail races, ultras, you've done, um, Mount Everest marathon, um, is it back end of last year you done that? Uh, last May, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's all it's all possible. It's just being being disciplined to be persistent with um, taking the right actions. And I think the yeah. the thing was is like looking looking at us and knowing the background story of, of each of you, and like even talking about myself the past couple of months. My training has been non-existent. Like this week, I'm only just getting back into training after like almost two months. And it's like, although in my head and my physical body, I'm like, mm, don't really feel like I'm in shape. It's like, come on, be realistic. Like I haven't, I haven't slipped that, that much in terms of like physique and fitness would have digressed a little bit, but hey ho, you can pick it back up because foundationally you've got those habits and it doesn't matter exactly where you are. If you've got the discipline, and it takes a lot of discipline to get back on track if, if things slip, then that's the majority of, of the battle. And then also the mindset piece behind that is like it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be perfect. It's it's really the consistency piece. Yeah, it was um we were just had just come off the back of uh, one of the members' calls and we were talking about recovery today. And like through the analysis of kind of like how I've trained and because I've been like sleep and everything's been like thrown out of whack quite consistently. What I've had to do to actually increase my fitness levels is reduce my training, which sounds really backwards. But what I was noticing was I wasn't recovering as well, even though I was hitting like the key sessions, like harder, harder sessions. So I could have that, that mental side, but I had to reduce the overall load so that I could then recovered better which means my body was going to adapt better now i'm not going to hit that race or the um, the spartan race at my what i'd consider peak fitness but it would it was a lot better than if i just kept thrashing myself all the way through because i wouldn't have made like many gains and as a result i could have potentially injured myself which going into it obviously yeah i'm getting dnf effectively so um yeah, it's like being intuitive to to listening to your body and know when to sort of back off for the great good. And yeah, that that's what I've had to do to to manage things quite consistently over these these last months. It's something that we're trying to get the rest of the team members to to really sort of check in with themselves with you know how they're feeling. Um, you know, it's, it's like anything. If 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 we just keep pushing through, then um, something's going to give. So yeah. It's quite sure. a good realization I've made over the last months. Mitch, you got anything you want to add on this? No, I've got nothing at the moment. It's just good to hear Chinny's like side and how he adjusts and adapts. And I think it just goes to show that you can do you can do anything and achieve goals that you set as long as you're realistic and just take your time with it instead of just fucking wanting it there and then because as humans we want the result and the reward straight away we want that dopamine hit and in life it that doesn't happen yeah for sure yeah it takes takes patience it really does that's, um, that, that's one of the things that people see a lot as well is like especially how successful you both are 
like they just see that you've got podiums and bags and medals and whatnot. But the real the realism behind it is how many years it has gone into it. And like, yeah, there's gonna be frustrations and, and things like that that go along. Mm -hmm. And we all have like shit training sessions. And that's part and parcel of it. It's like, what what can we learn from that? Okay. Maybe I was a little bit too tired or maybe I was coming off the back of an illness. Maybe I tried to get into it too quickly. Yes. Yeah. Take your time. Got bags of it. Yeah, and I think the thing that popped up then for me was like looking at like my progress, our own progress, and, and witnessing other people in, in this, um, going from pretty much like non-competitive racing to competitive racing like age group and now like doing it more like elite pro level like within spartan it does take time um and i think a limiting belief of people that are doing non-competitive racing is that they're not good enough to do competitive racing therefore they don't do competitive racing whereas actually they would thrive more and gain more benefit from doing competitive racing then the competitive races right now, they look at like the pros or the elite level athletes and going, oh, I could never do that. Well, it's like, hang on a minute. You stepped up from open heat to age group. That's one jump in itself. And another jump is going from age group to elite racing and performing at a high level. It's like, mm -hmm. if you can make that jump from there to there, you can make that jump from there to there. It just may take more time, a different skill set, a different approach. And being patient and, and and committed to the to the process, but the biggest thing is is self doubt. Like if we doubt ourselves, we get in our own head, we talk ourselves down, we sabotage our potential and the results that we could get. Then we make up a story and a bunch of excuses, and then that reinforces that belief system. And then we don't take the action, and that's the reason why we don't progress, and that's the reason why we fail more so than actually the approach and, and the process um, that is needed to to get there um so yeah yeah um i think i don't know like looking at like race times matt like you you didn't do bad at all you say hey, i already come eight it's like you ran a beast in two hours and 20 minutes <laughs> yeah on some pretty hilly terrain um and the temperature was fucking hot as well so yeah it's a fucking strong effort um yeah and over like i think 300 races that are in the wave you were in like the top 50 of of that um so yeah fucking phenomenal effort on on your side um we watched back some of the videos as well like we've obviously been on social media and, and whatnot um and i don't know like, i'd like to hear your perspective on it because it's like you're a strong runner but then incorporating heavy carries climbs um things like spear throw rigs all those sorts of things like what was kind of the the things that come up for you that well was a was a challenge to actually train for that may have kind of like held you back but right if we're taking it back like i would say originally it's the mindset side because i've been like primal coach for three and a half years and with that like it's the first time I'm going to meet a lot of lot of the athletes that I'm I'm helping train and, and sort of help change their, their lives and whatnot. So automatically you've got like in your head is like I've got to be able to perform like on this day. So like that side of thing was was always like there, but I had to put it to the side and then focus with more so kind of what I could do. I always knew that I was going to be struggling with things like the Herc hoist because I haven't really had too many opportunities like the, the Atlas carry. Um, yeah. Mitch absolutely shouted at me just to get on my shoulder. Again, that was, I would say that was almost like a limiting belief that I had in that moment was because I hadn't done any of that. I hadn't thrown anything on my shoulder like that for years. So yeah, it was like, can I do it? I'm not sure. Like there were, there were certain things that I, I used sort of brute strength with because I didn't have time to practice like um, the rope climb. So yeah, I just two handed it all the way up because I didn't want to waste time fucking around with a J hook when I hadn't had a chance to practice it and then just be flopping around the rope. So 
I knew that was going to impact like my performance. Um, anything carries again. I hadn't really had the opportunity to do too many of those. I mean, I do in, incorporate at certain points. So because whenever I'm in a country, uh, I have to go food shopping. So I make sure that I always walk back to my apartment. So that incorporates some sort of carry. Um, but yeah, I mean, my, my groceries don't sort of weigh 50 kilos or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be an absolute animal. Um, so yeah, there's there's limitations. So that that was always going to be a struggle, where like anything that was carry or anything that was going to be sort of strength work. So combining that with running, yeah, I mean the first kilometer we we set off pretty hard. Um, I think I just well, I was I wanted to make sure I got ahead. So I could get into the first couple of obstacles and then sort of like ease into a running pace. And I found that was that was really good. But yeah, I gassed myself out, pretty much went straight up to zone five with the first couple of obstacles. And I was just like, okay, let's back it off a little bit. Um, yeah, so it was definitely sort of challenging adding in those, those elements of training or um, the weight side of things to it. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots to um like discuss here and unpack because um yeah it's it was just a challenging course and like credit to you and actually not just like credit to you I think it emphasizes the point of I think it is the mindset really like when we are approaching an event such as okay I don't have all the kit and equipment that I need like there's there's no way possibly I can even practice. I don't know, like 70%, 80% of these. But what I can do is get as close as possible to being as specific as I can and then incorporating things into your day um, to assist with that. And then also when you go out on the course and, and apply that, actually you get some great results and pass things. An example of that is like watching you on some of the rigs, like your single arm dead hang strength is fucking killer. <laughs> that saved you like so many times. It's like, okay, I don't have the skills to work out this multi-rig or or this new obstacle that we've never seen, but then you get on it and you slip a little bit and you just fucking hang in there. <laughs> like, it's like, yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it. Like if you can't if you can't practice stuff, like get as close to practicing it as, as possible. Yeah, and that, that that's key for anyone. It's just like you got to work with the limitations you have, and you know we we'll always talk about things not being perfect, and it, it never will be. And if you wait for everything to align, you're never going to take action on anything. You know, I could have waited to do Spartan, but it would have been like two years until I can potentially be in a place where I could train specifically. By that time, like something could have happened or changed or whatnot. So, yeah, I think it's it's really important that we just like throw ourselves into it and then and work it out as we go along. It's so like the contrast now is I've got like a, a race in eight weeks, which is at three and a half thousand meters altitude. Yeah, I'm at 130 meters in the UK. <laughs> so it's going to be obviously an extra challenge. Like there's only so much you can do. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, and that is the the mindset rather than having like this this mindset of okay things aren't perfect so things aren't going to go go well and that may be part of it versus actually like doing the best that i am with the tools that i have available to me right now so let's take some shots and actually move forward even if it's not as much ground as i necessarily want to be moving forward but that's that's the sacrifice of doing like what you specifically do and and, and traveling um yeah, but it's all, all lessons learned, isn't it? And I know you're looking for more like stability and staying in staying in one place for a longer period of time. Um, yeah. But I think it's also really important and like yourself, Mitch, and even like the, the members within our community, they're like, Yeah, you're gonna smash it, you'll you'll do good. It's you know, it's not what you expect. And like I knew what I was expecting, I like I knew it weren't gonna be easy. But like in your head, you build this thing up that it's going to be like absolutely nails or impossible and whatnot. And the reality is far from it. And we apply that to like, we become like victims of our own minds sometimes. Like we, we allow our minds to talk us out of doing things. So yeah, you're right. It wasn't too bad. 
<laughs> looking, looking back, I know a lot of people were in the pain cave. Yeah. We was looking at some people like, oh, yes, you're feeling it. I've, I've been there at points. Um, yeah. yeah. I, it was literally because I hadn't seen, seen you both up until like towards the end of the course. And I already had like a, a little bit of cramp start to kick in. And then it came to all like the heavy lift parts. So the first time I saw Mitch, I was just like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know what he's like. <laughs> We'll, we'll be there when you need to, when you need it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, to be fair, I did need him at that point. Um, yeah, I already had, like, wobbly legs, and then one of the biggest fears was, like, throwing that atlas onto my shoulder and then the cramp setting in at that moment because I'd already had, like, moments of it coming through. I thought, if that goes, it's just going to land straight on my, like, I'm going to fold in half or something. So, yeah, it was... um. Yeah, it's definitely challenging. <laughs> like all the heavy lifts right at the back end of the race. Mm. Yeah, that was a it was a good setup. It's quite typical of Spark to do that cluster at the end, but that is a very like unique cluster of of different things. And although that hill at the end is not like particularly large, it's it's demoralizing because you're just spent at the end of that race. Um but yeah, it's a it's a different type of hard doing like this to a running race or a mountain race that, that you're used to. The intensity is like completely different. Um, I think the temperature made it a lot harder as as well, um, but it caught a lot of people out. Definitely, it was it was tough. And actually, I spoke to I think I spoke to like four people, four different people at different times on Saturday that quit. Like they they stopped early on in the race. Either like heart rate was too high too early on, the breathing was out of whack, they didn't feel right, and they just stopped. And I think that's it takes a lot to actually make that call to like push your ego to the side to just go, you know what, like I'm, I'm done um, versus actually pushing on and messing yourself up. Cause it's like looking at the bigger picture as well. I don't think everyone had like other big races or plans coming up and whatever else, but if you do, it's like, you could, you could definitely um, put yourself out for a while. If you, if you try and push through that, it's another reason why me and Mitch didn't race Saturday and taking it a bit easier, getting ready for some upcoming races. Cause it's like, it all comes at some form of a cost when you're just constantly like racing. Um, yeah. You obviously get good training value, but Hey ho, like you gotta, you gotta make some calls some tough calls at times. Um, yeah. And there's a lot to learn from what you just said, like about the, the pacing, the heart rate, the breathing, all that sort of stuff. Cool. Um, yeah, I think, um, like I said a, a little while ago, like the, the skill days um, will be really beneficial, just training at local courses, something like East Anglia, um, plan to go down to like nuclear wild forest a few times. Um, so, yeah. I'll put it in the Facebook group when I go to do that <clears throat> because yeah, it'd just be good down to go and focus on some skill based work, some people because it really bridges the gap. And I know Matt, like had we had done that, I don't know, a week or two ago and drilled some of the obstacles more specifically, it will come with like fluidity. Because a lot of it is like you can have the fitness, you can have the strength, two big components, you can have like the race strategy, you can pace yourself, you can know the course, you can execute the plan. But then it's like, okay, do I have the skills to do these obstacles? And there's been many times in the past year where I've got to obstacles on completely new venues, completely new courses outside of Spartan. And I'm like shouting at the technical official. It's like, how do I even do this? Like, what what are the rules? <laughs> like, how, how do I do this? And they're like, oh, you need to do this and this. So you're kind of like learning on the move. But I feel like you you didn't really have any of that really. I mean, you've done OCR in the past, but it's been a it's been a like big, big amount of time. So yeah, no, I spent a lot of time sort of asking asking the marshals and whatnot. I like, wasted a bit of time and I was, yeah, it's. I I learned a lot in that race, that one one race, and like I know what I could specifically work on next time where I could bridge that gap huge like by a huge amount. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'll be chasing it next year if I get back in time. <laughs> That's it. You said it now. You're coming back to the UK. The community <laughs> urge <Zerger> as well. You've <laughs> <laughs> got to keep peer pressure in Matt Chin and he, he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
Falls like a, a soggy Kit Kat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what sort of games you've been playing, but <laughs> you were in the RAF, so. <laughs> yeah, I was playing RAF, boys. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Does anyone else want to take this uh, conversation in another direction based on what we talked about before I like, move on? I think you can apply a lot of the the things that you learn out on course into into your life. Like when you were speaking about going from open to age group and then from age group to like elite pro. Like you can look at your your goals in that in that sense as well. Um but also like go go looking at New Year's resolutions, people give up within a week or two weeks and it's they're trying to get a week done or a month done or three months done. It's like, right, I've got three months to do this. Instead of looking at, right, I've got an hour to get through or I've got 30 minutes or I've got a day to get through. When you break things down into small little objectives, it that's what helps build your habits and your routines. And then from there, they're the things that lead to your long-term success and to get to where you are. Like Chinny, for example, he didn't have a lot of places to like train grip, but he said like he'd always walk back with his shopping. Like that's carrying, that's working on your grip. Yes, it may not have been very specific and over time, but because of that small little objective he did every time, like he was able to like hang on for fucking dear life on those rigs because of just that small little habit and action that he, he had taken. It didn't happen every day or every night but he made that action take and i think if you can apply that simple and effective action steps to your life like on a daily basis like that will get you a lot further instead of thinking right i've got fucking this time to get it done because you set yourself up for failure absolutely yeah 100 percent. yeah a lot of this is that that inner that inner battle with that inner saboteur yeah everything i think we spoke about it a little bit like last week um and i've definitely had that over the past couple of months um but more so in the past week probably say three weeks leading up to this week where i'm actually keen and motivated to get back into my own training <clears throat> because i've been i've been active and i've eaten cleanly um for, for the most part um, but I've not been in like structured training, training sessions. Um, and there has naturally been like regression on that, but yeah, a lot of it is, is the mindset, the way that we, we tackle things and just, I think I mentioned it. I did, I did mention it earlier on my run. It's, it's being, being confident enough in yourself or being courageous enough with like what you're about to do to actually like take time out to like recalibrate or know that it's okay if things aren't like perfect all of the time but not like for me now to go yeah everything's going to be perfect in this next training block completely unrealistic completely unrealistic there'll be curveballs there'll be <laughs> the unexpected things will pop up and come in the way but if we understand that when that comes up we handle the situation a lot better i mean mitch you just like recently put yourself back into a training camp um this is something mitch does i mean you can talk you can talk to that if you want um but it's just like knowing yourself and what what works, um, and that's that's the consistency across the long term. And even though I've been out in the past, I don't know, six months, year, gained a lot of fitness over the winter. Come to like February time, and it was like okay, some life events are happening, and things took a bit of a nosedive, led to some inconsistencies, and that was at a pivotal point of the of the season. And then a couple of months down the line, I'm just picking things back up. But that is consistency across the long term. If if I like amplified that and put that as like, I don't know, a 12 month period, a two year period, there will be progress. And I think we spoke about this, Mitch, it's kind of like when we see people's charts in terms of like the progress of the fitness, muscle gain, fat loss, all that sort of stuff. It's like maybe they're up here in terms of fat loss when they join, then they'll go down to here. Then there might be a little bit of an up and then up, down, up, down, up, down. But when they go, oh, actually 12 months later, I've, I'm in good shape or whatever, but I don't feel like I'm great. So look at that line. Like there has been that and exactly the same for other gains in fitness, strength or whatever. But if you was to draw a straight line through that, there would be an upward or downward trajectory in, in, the, in the positive ways for each and every person. But we don't see that. 
Um, typically, what we do is we focus on the here and now and whatever emotional feelings in, in the current place. And then we go, well, I haven't made any progress because I'm not feeling really well. But actually, if you have someone like saying this to you, or if you're aware of this yourself, then it's like, okay, it's fine. Okay, just just do what is within my control right now. Um, and try not to worry too much about like the rest of it, just get back on it and be as consistent as possible. Sweet. Anyone else want to chat over anything else on like mindset before we move on? Yeah, it's like, for example, if, if you're having a bit of a dip or whatever at this moment, or it, it's happened before, it's, you know, we're talking about the consistency. I think in 20 years' time, you're not going to remember the workout, the two workouts, the week that you've taken off. And even for yourself, Matt, you've had a couple of months off training. Well, in 20 years' time, you're not going to remember that. But through the action of consistent consistency, like you'll probably be fitter than you were like 20 years back. And and that's one thing that I've noticed. I'm, I've just turned 36 and I'm in the fittest, like on the fastest, the fittest that I've been. And like all I'm all I'm gonna be keep doing is progressing because I know how to do it and I know that it's not gonna be I'm not gonna have perfect runs. I'm not gonna have like the perfect days and whatnot. But just by showing up and if I can't train one day, then I can focus on eating well or sleeping well. It's not just the training, it's like we can maximize different areas within our lives. So your mindset, if we could, if our mindset is not in a good place, well, the training is not going to be in a good place and nutrition is not going to be in a good place. Sleep's probably not going to be in a good place. So that's why we put so much emphasis on, on work in the mind. Cause once, once you get a, a strong calloused mind, then yeah, you can be really sort of disciplined um, with the other areas of life. And again, if, if you're not in a good place mentally, everything's going to have a knock-on effect. So, yeah. A lot of people sort of bypass that and they'll just go straight to thrashing themselves in training, get an injury. Then the mindset gets fucked because they can't train. So it's just this this repeat cycle. So it's really, really important to, um, yeah, to work on that. Yeah, That's definitely. We can do. Yeah, it's a, it's a big pillar and um, it's something I've definitely been diving into um, and we've like been diving into as a community for some time is, um, well, more of like the the past programming, our story, like why things are as they are in like our our lives right now. Because it's not just as simple as okay, here's the problem, here's what's going on, and here's the solution. It's like even with a fitness plan, if people come into a fitness plan, they're typically super motivated initially. But if they've still got the limiting beliefs, the story, the trauma, all the stuff that's put them in that place to start with, they're not going to truly grow in the way that they want. And that was one of the things that led me to go on to my like recent like spiritual journey and all the experiences was like, okay, what got me to here won't get me to there. And if I don't take action here and now in this particular way, then I'm not going to move past it and I'm going to continue to repeat these patterns. So it's changing that story, that belief system, and really doing that internal work to start thinking and therefore acting and behaving in a different way. But I think the second part of that is like the lifestyle and the environment. And like what I mean by like lifestyle is like, how are we eating? How are we sleeping? Like what is within that environment? Is it toxic? Is it is it like dragging our energy down? Like, is that not promoting our health? Everything from like the utilization of light, sunlight, blue light, yeah stress work like have we got good boundaries in place have we got good healthy habits because it's like we can think act and behave in the most positive way but if we're in a toxic environment or in an environment which is drawing our energy down it's going to be very very difficult to operate in 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 like a very positive constructive way so if we start to like shift the the lifestyle and what's contained within our lifestyle then actually that changes things on a cellular level, which promotes our health and energy and vitality. And it actually makes it all a lot easier as well. So like focusing on well, these two, your mindset, the way that you think, act, and, and therefore behave, as well as like the lifestyle, are very much so entwined. 
and we we speak a lot about training have just spoke a lot about training and it's a huge huge part of what we do and actually it's probably the biggest part of the work we do it's the most like laborsome stuff like creating the programs for people but actually it's all of the the conversations that we have like this it's the coaching calls it's the one-to-one -one interactions that we have via messenger on phone calls with the people that we work with in ourselves because we're actively like working on ourselves as well when we connect as a team as coaches and with the girls as well like it's very constructive rewarding um information that's exchanged constantly like even in our like whatsapp group and, and stuff like that which feeds into our lives but then we disseminate it down to other people like you just said matt like all the experiences you've gained from this this race this weekend holy shit that's not only going to be like transformative for you but that's going to be transformative for, for the guys that you work with um in in this community as well and it's just a contagious like beneficial thing and now even going into your next race I guarantee you've got more of a fire in your belly. You're you're feeling more like positive and like upbeat about it than you than you were before. And that's kind of where I stand, Mitch. I know you you're very similar with this as well. Like you can either take the good and the bad for what it is. It's a bad experience or it's a good experience, or you could look at everything as an experience and use that in a constructive way and going, well, there's two outcomes from here. I've one, I've got all the outcomes I want, or two, like there's a lot of lessons learned. And both of those are great outcomes that we can carry forward. But yeah, again, it comes back to comes back to mindset. But I feel like, yeah, you, you bang on with like the sort of like the mentality that we have as individuals is absolutely key, but then also the lifestyle. But when we look at that mindset, it can be very difficult to change that if it's been forged in a particular way. And as much as we speak about this, people won't necessarily create any change in their life. Um, people have to be like ready, ready to take action for a better self, a better future or whatever that is. And yet again, I don't want to keep harping on about my experience, but that was exactly the, the fact for me. I think I spoke about it previously, like, oh, I'm called to go to Costa Rica. I'm called to do this. In fact, it was three fucking years, years ago that Costa Rica popped up. It was actually like, I think it was during the pandemic. And I was like, yeah, I want to go to Costa Rica. Costa Rica is calling to me. I can go to Costa Rica and didn't really know why, but then didn't take the action to go there. And then it come up again and again and again. And it was just there, but I never took any action. And then it wasn't until like the start of this year and all that happened was like, all right, well, I'm going to Costa Rica later this year. So I'll just go then because it's tied in with a race and whatever else. And I was like, actually, no, you're fucking delaying this. You've put this off too long. Let's fucking go right now. Let's let's book it in at the earliest opportunity, but that's human nature. I mean, I was speaking to a lady um, yesterday at the obstacle course um, that I went and, and trained at, um, and she has a very different approach to me. And it doesn't mean that I'm right and she's wrong, but she likes to kind of slowly sift through things. And it took her years and years and years to get to the point she is. Whereas I was kind of like, I'm going to kick down the door, I'm going to go in hard, <laughs> like do this particular work, and then do all the work after that. So it's kind of like each to your own and, and whatever um, works for that individual. But if you're like, if you feel like you're called to something or there's, there's signs there, listen to those signs, like be intuitive, like trust, trust your gut. If you think that this is a lot of what we do actually in, in terms of like the lifestyle is like primal, everyone thinks, yeah, primal is really cool. And there's loads of little primal things popping up. People thinking they're primal. It's like, well, we're all primal, we're all primitive beings which is very lost and disconnected in today's world because of all the the inputs that we have. And there's nothing really that primal about it, apart from your primal body, your primal mind, that's not thinking and acting and behaving in a primal way because of all the, um, the external inputs and all the things that we're putting into our body, which is completely impairing the way that we're meant to operate. So a lot of that is just not like regressing but going back to like living more like more, more like humans are meant to be doing and, and doing the work that you're actually like cool to do and being intuitive we speak about this on like our nutrition coaching calls like talking about like animals like that are out there in nature they don't like they don't like over gorge on things they will eat enough and they'll eat the right thing and if something's nasty or bad they'll avoid it Whereas humans, we don't do that. And that's a lot to do with the environment that we live in and the houses and the shops and like the, the chemicals that are contained within food that make us make those bad choices. But intuitively, we know what is right and wrong and what will promote our health and what will, what will benefit us. The difficulty is making that decision. But that's where like conversations like this come in as a, as a reminder. 
even as far as connections as well, though, one of the things that I've noticed when I move around so frequently is I don't build up like connections. And like when I was traveling with my ex, like we were traveling together for two years, it was pretty much myself and her. So we we're like very much together. So it was, it was easier for us to be together in that sense rather than go out and force it to to find new people to to connect with and whatnot. But that was one thing that I was craving. And I wasn't listening to that. It was only when I broke up with her that I was just like, shit, I need, I need friends. I want to hang around with guys. I wasn't interested in finding like the next girl to, you know, I was, I wanted to hang around with guys and do guy shit, you know, get my ass out and stuff or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> And as soon as I did that, like, it felt good. And like, I changed. I, I was going back to who I was again. And even this weekend, like I got that little smile again. And, you know, as soon as, as, soon as I spot, oh, you spotted us coming around the corner. It's like, hey, who's it? And it's like, hey. You know? <laughs> and, and those are little things that we we sometimes neglect. And, you know, in, in our relationships, whether we stay in a relationship that we shouldn't be in, because it's easier or you know friendships like we might have outgrown people but we're scared to disconnect and then if we don't disconnect we're always going to be held back from our true potential or or our true calling so yeah just as important as like the nutrition just as important as sleeping well and and you know going back to our roots well primal creatures are sort of like you know communities like they enjoy community so yeah that was one of the realizations that i found and again it's like sometimes the things that we need to do well most of the time the things that we need to do are the hardest ugliest things that we have to do but once you've like made that decision or you've taken action on it like it's going to elevate you to a place that you didn't think was possible and yeah like looking looking on a year after I separated from my ex, like I'm in a better place mentally, physically and, and spiritually at the same time, because I've had to take, do the work of myself and it's not over yet. Like I've still got a lot more that I need to do. Yeah. But I'm comfortable enough to be able to speak about it from my experiences and, and the effect that it's had on me as well. And I can bring all this into helping others as well yeah and i think it's important for everyone to know that like we're all going for our own stuff as well and actually one of the insights i had from being away um like one of the visions was like we're all in this together like us people were all in this together and there's so much shit that fucking holds us back and weighs us down and then we're all attacking each other and casting blame and whatever else but actually, like, if we just, like, step back and we'll come from a different perspective, come from a place of love and understanding and holding space and creating space for ourselves and others, a lot of good things come from that. Um, and then I think another thing is, like, people do come into our life and leave our life at various points. And there's always an experience to be had from that that we can carry carry forward. Um but yeah, it's, it's it's challenging. That's for that's for sure. But I think what you're trying to talk about here is like the connection and the the appreciation for others. Um, and like this weekend was a prime example of it. Like it was just like the thing that makes the race weekends is is the people and having the conversations. Yeah, and it's just it's great. And like going into the health point of that and community is like, it's actually one of the pillars of health. Something we teach is like the pillars of health and longevity. There's 12 major ones that are taken from the blue zone zones, which are the cultures around the world that have the longest lifespan. They've got the most amount of centenarians in a concentrated area. And a big, big one of that is community It's in fact, it's bigger than like nutrition because of all of these different cultures have got different, different um, nutritional approaches. Yeah. They're all centenarians. But what they do have is a very strong connection to other people and humans, a very, very good support network. And talking about what Matt's um, talking about, like traveling and being on his own and stuff like that. I was like that, like from kind of like leading up to the pandemic, after the pandemic, 
because everything was just virtual and me and Matt pretty much speak every day. Me and Mitch pretty much speak every day, but we kind of see like 2D Batchin and 2D Liam Mitchell. But when you see them in the real world and you see it from a different perspective and there's actually like that, that energy, that exchange of energy, like it's a different level of connection. And we all like massively need that, but we really need to make an effort to create this. And Matt, you've like gone out your way to come and do this, but it's worth the reward. Mitch, you got anything you want to share on this? Yeah, I just want to wind it back to the action part and the taking action and the effort. Like everything in life requires action and effort in some shape or form. Um, and going back to like the community, to become a part of a community or to get an understanding of where to go, you have to reach out. And that requires action. But there's times we don't feel like that because we're, we think we're not worthy enough. Um, and I can relate to this when I was abusing cocaine and alcohol a lot. Like I just, I wanted to fit in. Um, I wanted to be cool and I would then hide away. And there was no action being taken on my part to make changes or to reach out for support at all. Until one day there was a sign where it was like, I've got a fucking change. And after that, I had taken action to make that change. And you see it within a lot of our community. They take action, but it's, it's going back to those small action steps. Like the action doesn't have to be huge. It's just got to be one small, tiny step. Like if you've got two ladders next year, One's got small steps and one's got big steps. The one that's going to get you further um, is going to be the one with the smaller steps. Whereas the one that's got bigger steps is going to require a huge amount of effort to reach the next step. I think I've gone a bit on a, bit on a fucking tangent there, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And equally you can use both. So like putting that into some more context is the approach to, we apply with everyone is taking those small steps but then occasionally we can take the bigger steps to gain more ground but then again that's not sustainable so then you go back to the small steps so if you want to create change fast i think i put this on a post actually the other day then you take the hard action like i did to get things moving forward that will create a little bit of momentum but then that momentum will be unsustainable it's like Imagine you're going up a cargo net or that ladder and there's really, really big steps. It's going to fatigue you versus actually you could take little baby steps on the way up. You can do both simultaneously, but it doesn't mean that both can be done and sustained at the same like level as how you initially start. But the, the small step process is definitely more sustainable and, and enjoyable. And, and I think tying that back into um, what we spoke about earlier um, with like um, like the mindset as well. Is, is really crucial. Sweet. Anything else you guys want to go over on, on that? Cool. All right. Well, there are some other subjects and things like that I want to go over, but I feel like it would kind of take away from what we what we've said so we can we can speak more about um like either the injury prevention aspect to do with training or we can speak about like nutrition and cramping on the races because I know that is actually a really big thing for people. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's quite a few people that have jumped on and watched this live. But if you're watching this back or listening to the podcast, um, you can interact. Like you can you can ask questions over on Spotify or you can ask questions on this this live video below it in the comments or message us in, uh, individually as, as well. Um, yeah. And you 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 gain some benefit and, and value, but yet again, it's like what we've been speaking about is like a lot of people will like avoid or not take the action to do that because of some sort of fear. Like the I don't, I don't know, like we're we're humans at the other end of a other end of a line here. We're not we're not going to bite your head off. Like hopefully you can see that we're we're actual people. All right, we're not all that scary, although we may be perceived as as that. And actually, like the 
the biggest obstacle we do have is in our own mind but this is a lot of what we do it's not just about like the obstacles that are on the course that we teach you to overcome like and one of the reasons why we're called the obstacle dominators is as, like manly and as aggressive as that can seem it's like it's not just about the physical obstacles that are on that course that's one thing we can teach you but if you don't get out the way of your own success because of these self-imposed obstacles or the imposed obstacles from life experiences or others then you're never truly going to move forward it may just be a mask that you're throwing yourself into events and challenges and doing really well but it will get to a point where you actually need to change your change your point of view or change the approach and do some inner work and that's something we're certainly starting to incorporate more in um one of my coaches who I just brought in i'm going to bring him in to do some sessions he's like a very spiritual very wise guy and there's just so much value and we'll incorporate more of this this work in but yeah if you do have questions let us know I mean, I think that's something that could be beneficial for the community that those that watch it back is like, if there's any, any questions, uh, we could just get a list of questions. And at the end of each call on the Monday, we can go through it and just answer it or even go through the call for it as well. Just so um, everyone's getting the benefit from it. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And we're doing a one person doing a call in a few hours with the guys just like doing a race recap and, yeah, just talking through some of the specific well, races people had and the good and the bad. Yeah. Tons of value, but I think we'll, we'll leave it there, guys. Appreciate you hopping on. Yeah, anything final before we end? Sweet. All right. Um, like we said previous, Wayne, to do this like every week. Um, potentially it'll be myself and one of these awesome guys or it'll be all three of us or maybe it would just be me. Um, just depends on where these guys are and their travels and what's on the the calendars. They're obviously busy guys um, doing what they do. So yeah, just look forward to that. And if there's anything you want in terms of us to to talk about, we can talk about this in a lot more detail because like I think a lot of the people that have actually jumped on here are the people that we work with. And that's because they understand the benefit to getting in proximity to other people in the community, the coaches, so this just massive value exchange, yeah, and being part of the community. And we spoke about this actually, um, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago. In fact, I told, spoke about it, I think maybe a couple of Thursdays ago, but it's like just showing up, like showing up for yourself consistently on the calls, whether you want to be on them or not. Like that's that's the question, like your psychology there and the way that you're kind of thinking. But then it's like you may not necessarily be on a call for yourself if you don't necessarily need something. There may be someone on that call that needs something from you, an insight, a bit of advice. Or someone may come on and ask a question that you hadn't thought about, which will then help you improve your own skill set. All right, And this is what these calls are about. But if you don't give anything, you don't get anything in return. But the more you give, the more you get in return. But yet again, that goes back onto the obstacles of the mind and people don't raise their hand. They go, oh, I've got a question because we feel stupid. I think I spoke about that last week on, on the last episode was like I had a moment like that in Costa Rica where there's 20 people sitting around and I was like, should I ask this question? I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to ask this question. Afterwards, three people come up to me, I think, and said, yeah, I was going to ask that question. It was a great question. But I had like a little bit of doubt inside me. So don't, don't be your own worst enemy and like, take some action off the back of this call. It's going to be something that you're avoiding putting off. All right. It's the middle of the day for people in the UK and in the States, it's the morning time. So should you actually be on Facebook listening to us right now, or should you be doing some work? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're here, but um, yeah, I'm glad you're taking some time out, but this will be on the podcast as well, but thanks very much guys. And uh, we'll catch you soon. I appreciate it. Cheers. Bye.